So a few months ago, I was driving my missus to work in her Fiat 500. Approached a roundabout, went to put my foot down to pull out, and this car just completely cut out. Right in the middle of the roundabout, during rush hour, and I could not get it going again. Managed to push it to the side of the road, and then in the end, we had to get it recovered by the RAC, right back to this spot just here, where this car has sat for about three months now. So this car has what we're calling a blown engine. I will dive into more depth about what I mean by that. We'll go right into everything that's wrong with this car. We'll have a big walk around, but the short of it is this engine sometimes has compression and sometimes doesn't. And yes, that's a mystery to everyone that's looked at it so far. Sometimes this car starts, sometimes it doesn't. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know this is not where I do the work on my cars. And so the first port of call before we do anything is I have to move this car. Now, I am very, very, very much hoping that this car starts because if I want to push it up that hill by myself, I mean, honestly, I don't know how I'm going to make it. This car only weighs, I just looked it up, 930 kilos, but still you know on my todd pushing it up there and there i don't want to think about it so i'm going to see if i can get this car started i haven't even sat in this car unlocked it in three months now at this point and there's people watching me <laughs> and i'm feeling very self-conscious right now because doing this in public is a whole other kind of thing <laughs> okay so there is a bit of battery the car did just unlock oh. Okay, what have we got? Can we get, have we got enough battery just to, okay, yeah. Okay, so the last time I tried to start this car, it didn't start. It only needs to move 400 meters under its own power. Excellent. <gasps> what a relief. <laughs> because not only did I go for the first run yesterday in about 17 years, so my calves are on fire, so I really didn't fancy pushing it, but me and the missus also got engaged at the weekend and someone gave us a bottle of champagne yesterday and we drank it all last night and <laughs> I'm feeling a bit ropey. Please don't cut out. Oh, she doesn't sound healthy. She does not sound healthy. Short shift, short shift. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. Just get me around the corner, please. What, can you hear the brakes? You can do it, Tina. This car already has a name. This car is called Tina. It was named by my missus, and that's because it's Tina the Twin Air. Okay, we're in safe territory now. Nice empty space vacated by Bob. So Tina is now back in the spot that regular viewers will know to be where I do all my cars. And if you're new to the channel, this right here is all I have to work with. I don't have a garage, I don't really have a driveway. I have this one parking space. That's my neighbor's car. That's my workbench. <laughs> and if you're new to me, I'm not a mechanic, I've been teaching myself how to do this, this is now my second project. So bear that in mind when you find yourself absolutely screaming at the screen going, no idiot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave her running just for a bit, I'm going to bring her up to a temperature and just see how she fares with that to be honest with you because the last time we had her running she was putting out quite a bit of blue smoke out of the exhaust. and I'm pretty sure some of you can already start working out what might be wrong with her. She's now fully up to temperature. She's been running for about 30 minutes, so that's a fairly good sign. If we come down the back here, so I'm assuming that most of that's just water from condensation that's been pushed out of the exhaust. So let's have a whip around the car and we'll talk about it and then we're gonna go right into detail. This is a 2010 Fiat 500 Twin Air. This has got the 0.9 litre two-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. I think, I say 0.9 litre, I think it's actually something mental like 875cc, which is essentially this big. It's got a very small engine on it, but it still manages to put out about 85 brake horsepower, I believe. My missus bought this car when she passed her driving test a few years ago. That's gonna make sense now. So if I get up close here, <laughs> you see, you can see there's a little bit of, you know, new driver 
battle scars there where I think she kind of scraped a bit of a post once when she was parking and you know the car's in pretty decent condition kinda <laughs> kinda it, it does have look, I mean there's more evidence of the new driver battle scars the uh, the poverty caps are fairly damaged they're fairly worn and then if we come down this side right there we've got a massive great dent it's about that big there I run my finger down it you can see it go in and out that was done by someone else when it was parked where you saw the car someone's basically just driven into it and they drove off not left their details and left us with that dent in the door there so that was very kind of them and then coming down the car you know there's just some kind of general general scratches and stuff the car's 12 years old bear that in mind you know so it is going to have a little bit of wear but everything else really is kind of in place the bodywork around the back is in fairly good condition it's quite dirty you've got another little scrape there i do believe again that was my missus. Everything's in order, the boot works, it's all good in there. Coming down this side, the bodywork was absolutely fantastic right up until about two weeks ago. There's some complete low life there, look, they just keyed the car all the way from here, all the way down there, right onto the front wing there. So I'll never understand why people do that. And even when you live in a nice area, you still get your car keyed, so. Who knows why that is. This is the pop model. It doesn't have like loads of creature comforts and stuff. In fact, this car doesn't even have air conditioning, which is a little bit touch and go in the summer. It's really lovely in here. The interior is in really good nick. You know, the seats have got a couple of kind of cigarette burns, I think, in them there, but they've always been there as long as we've had the car. Neither of us to smoke. Oh, actually, I have just remembered something. On this door here, this is the one with the damage on it. That happens. <laughs> the handle's broken. That's two separate things. This happened before the dent. Apparently, this is a... Uh, this is quite a common thing for these Fiat 500s. And one of the things that we're definitely going to have to look at sorting is, oh, if I can grab it, this massive piece of metal hanging off of the centre part of the exhaust. So, I mean, that's just kind of corroded off. So, I'm assuming it's going to have to have a new exhaust or I don't know if you can replace the centre section. We'll take a look at that in a bit. But just before we get into looking at this engine right now, I think the best thing to do is to just rewind a little bit and I'm going to explain to you what happened with this car. As you know, I was driving this car and it was under power when it just completely cut out on me. Couldn't get it started again and it was making a quite horrendous noise every time that we tried to start the engine. So we did get it recovered home by the RAC. I've had two mechanics come and take a look at this car now to try and just really briefly diagnose what was going on. This car wasn't producing compression on cylinder one, I think it was. It was so long ago now, one or two. One of the two cylinders. 50% of the cylinders had no compression. What we did is they checked to see, you know, if the, what the oil looked like in the car. And that was when we discovered that there is no oil in the car. There was absolutely nothing showing on the dipstick. There is actually, on the MOT history, uh, it says there's a slight oil leak from the front of the engine. So we might have just been losing oil much quicker over a period of time and just, just completely passed us both by. You know, I'd hold myself, you know, partly responsible for that because I was driving this car also. But you know, no engine oil light ever came up on the dash. And so I just didn't really think about it at all. So basically the crux of it is we think this car has suffered from oil starvation. I mean, as I'm sure you're aware, you starve an engine of oil and the results can be catastrophic. Now, the very strange thing with this car, of course, is that it now runs and we haven't done anything to it other than put in oil. So when one of the mechanics came over, he did a compression test and we were cranking it, cranking it, nothing, nothing, nothing. Absolutely zero compression on one of the cylinders. It was low on one of the others and we tried it quite a few times. We were just about to give up and he said, I'll just try it one more time, who knows, like it might get, might get a little bit of a reading. I cranked the ignition and then all of a sudden the engine just sprung completely back to life and it had compression again. But I know it is weird for an engine not to have compression and then without doing a single thing other than turning the ignition, 
for the car to have compression again. And the mechanic said that in all the years that he's been a mechanic, he said he's never once seen that happen. Here's the thing, is that this car is seemingly running fine now. The car isn't smoking at all, but, and this is the big but, is that if you have an engine that doesn't have compression at all, and it also has no oil, and then you add some oil, and then all of a sudden it jerks back to life with a horrible noise and has compression, that is still not a healthy engine. I haven't tested it, but pretty sure it's not the head gasket. You know, when you pull the dipstick, there doesn't seem to be any evidence that water has been getting past the head gasket and uh, into the cylinders. So we've still got coolant, let's have a look, still got a load of coolant. And you know, it's not putting out loads of steam out the exhaust either. So, you know, we're pretty confident it's not a head gasket issue, but we're thinking this is probably gonna have been an issue with the piston rings or maybe even a valve. And so what's happened is as the engine is run out of lubrication, one of the one or all or some of the piston rings, basically, there's no lubrication. The piston rings are just protesting to the greatest degree and they're not sealing the engine. And so all the combustion gases and the fuel can get down past the piston rings into the engine or uh, a valve got stuck and basically the same thing. It's just, it's not sealing anything. And so the combustion gases and the fuel are kind of going everywhere. If it was a bent valve, then you also have the possibility that, you know, the piston has just been absolutely bashing hell out of it. And, you know, you've now got a broken piston, probably not a hole in a piston and it has compression. If you had a hole in your piston, I doubt very much you're gonna have compression. But we think the most likely thing is gonna have been the piston rings have failed. We put oil back in the car. It started to circulate around and the system as we were testing it for compression and then on one of the goes we think that the piston rings had enough lubrication and then they've basically just reseated back onto the piston you know if they've come out of their seats they've now reseated and the engine is now free once again and so there's probably a few of you thinking well great that's fine then you know it's come back around everything's jolly it's not smoking it, you know it's holding an, uh, an okay idle it's not cutting out the best thing to do with this car is probably just to sell it you know mention you had a couple of issues it cut out and then be done with it but what we don't know and because i haven't taken this engine apart i've not had anyone dive into it is you just don't know how much damage has been caused by that oil starvation and so you can instantly think of a few things that might well have happened in this engine because of that oil starvation right the piston rings have been going up and down in the cylinders and they might have scored living hell out of the cylinders i might have caused irreparable damage in the i say irreparable damage in the cylinders i mean like we we're into having to take all of the engine apart and then having the cylinders honed at the, you know, at the minimum, just to get rid of some of the damage that might be on the cylinder walls. We don't know what the damage might be to the, any of the bearings in there, if they had no oil and they've been spinning over. We don't know what's gone on with the turbo, just, it's just an absolute nightmare. And this is where I now find myself with a bit of a conundrum. And that conundrum is this. I don't really have the skills, the equipment, nor the facilities to completely take apart this engine and then try and diagnose what's happened. You know, regular viewers of this channel know that, you know, we're working with Halford's tools. We've got a little parking space out here. That's basically it. Now, if I start trying to take the cylinder head off of this, you know, there's gonna be a large part of me that's just gonna be looking down some cylinders and going, oh, I don't know. Like, I can't see any scoring with my own eyes. You know, maybe some of the bearings are gone and then I'm having to take apart the cot, you know, or well, maybe I've done damage to the con rods and the, you know, the, the pin in the piston. Like, I'm not gonna know that. And if I start taking the engine apart like that here, where I have, look, I've got like bushes around me and they're letting off leaves and dust and everything, you know, all of this gunk and everything is just gonna go into the engine. I don't have a shed, I don't have a garage. So we've got like a real cleanliness issue. If I was to go and get this engine properly properly diagnosed by a garage it's going to cost a fortune <laughs> it's going to cost an absolute fortune you know the, these two mechanics i spoke to they said you know you, you're roughly going to be in the region of you know 800 to a thousand pounds easily just to diagnose because they're not just going to have to have a look at the pistons like i said they're going to have to check all of the bearings for oil starvation and you know we don't know what might be fused together what might be damaged and 
you've got to take the whole engine apart and then I'd have to pay a garage to do that and then, you know, you're in it for thousands of pounds. So, the decision that we've made is, obviously we don't want to just get rid of this car. We Buy Any Car actually offered us 220 pounds for this car with a broken engine. And there's no way we're going to sell the car knowing that that's happened with the engine. It's, you know, it's just not the right thing to do. It's, it, that's not cool. Just selling a car on that and pretending that oh, it's all fine. Like, I'm just not, I'm not down with that. So when I'm chatting to these mechanics, they've both said, you know what, because, you know, this isn't, this isn't a Mercedes AMG. It's not an RS Audi. It's just a Fiat 500. It's only worth a few grand. And, you know, I have this channel where, you know, we're into fixing cars. So we may as well keep it around and I may as well do something with it. So what we've decided to do is, I'm simply going to replace the whole engine. Now, you might think that's mad, but it comes down to cost. A replacement engine, a second-hand replacement engine for this car is way, way, way less money than simply taking it to a professional to diagnose fully what the damage is. Now, that might sound crazy to you, but that is simply the truth. So, I have actually bought a new engine and it's been sitting in my garden for a little while. There it is. <laughs> I bought this engine on eBay, so it's not complete. You know, I haven't even opened it. I just wrapped it up in this bag. It's an engine, less ancillaries. And that is just by far the absolute cheapest, most efficient way of making sure that this car does not go to the scrapyard. We really do not want this car to go to the scrapyard. And so one of the cool things with this engine is that it's actually from a car that's two years newer and this engine has 41,000 miles when the car has 61,000 miles. So, you know, we're putting a much fresher, newer engine into this car than the one that's already in it. It came from a reputable seller on eBay. They've got like, I think it was 99.9% .9 feedback and thousands of feedback. And it also comes with a 90 day warranty. So, you know, although I haven't seen that engine running, I am fairly confident that <laughs> it should be all right. I really hope it's gonna be okay. Now I understand this has been a bit of a, this has been a very long talkative video, but I really just needed to tell you the whole story, what the plan for this is. So let's do a real quick rundown of everything that I think I'm gonna have to do in this car. So as we've just discussed, new engine. I think I might get a new bumper and just uh, just to sort all these scratches out because, you know, I've been looking online and a new bumper for one of these second hand in pristine condition is about, I think there was someone there for 80 pounds. And I know full well that a body shop's gonna charge me more than 80 pounds to fix that. And as I've spoken about before, you know, I'm not into body work. I'm not gonna do it myself. I would mess it up because I'm just not interested in it. And then when we come down to this door, same story again, it's got a massive dent. So I did actually go and get a quote for this and I got quoted <laughs> 500 pounds to sort this dent out. And the reason it's so expensive is because right there, it's very hard to see because it's black, but this metal here is kind of creased either side of a big bar in there. So there's a safety bar that runs right through the middle of this door and it's there. And so what that means is that if you were to take the inside of the door off, the skin off, you wouldn't be able to get around the back and kind of just like pop it out very easily. So they were saying to me something along the lines of, you know, it's an extended amount of work now that you have to do because this is wrapped around the safety bar. If it was kind of a bit higher or a bit lower and it missed it, they'd have been able to just pull it out, pop it out, not a problem. So they quoted me 500 pounds <laughs> to get this done. And then, you know, fair play to them themselves. They said, look, mate, honestly, you, you're much better off just going to a scrap yard and buying a new door. And so I've had a look at that as well. And a whole new door for this is 100 pounds. So like it, it, it makes complete and utter sense to just replace the entire door and then I'll fix this handle at the same time. That won't be a problem. So engine, bumper, door, new exhaust. You saw the exhaust hanging off and then I'm not gonna bother with any of this. You know, that's kind of, 
I think that's an acceptable sized little scrape to be selling the car on with. And then, I'd, yeah, I mean, I don't know about this where it's been keyed. Probably gonna have a go, you know, with some deep polishing, just see how much better I can make that look myself. Uh, I'm not confident. <laughs> so I might have to get that quoted as well or find some other way of just doing that on the cheap. So I think the only thing to do now really is I've taken you around it. I've shown you what we're gonna do. There's probably a load of you that disagree with maybe the diagnosis or what we're gonna do, but I just wanna crack on with this straight away. I've already bought the engine, so it's kind of like, it's happening, <laughs> it's happening. And so I don't think I should talk anymore. I've been, I've been talking for quite a while. Okay, so I've got her up on axle stands, wheels off. Both of the wheels are underneath because I always get shouted at for not putting the wheels under the car. Hopefully they won't get nicked, they're just stealers. So let me just talk to you really quickly about how I plan to approach all of this work. This is now my second rodeo. I've done this before, I've taken the engine out of the Mini and I put it back in. So with the Mini, what I did was that I looked at really comprehensive instructions. I was actually following a really comprehensive video on how to take the engine out of the Mini. With this, I'm not going to do that. And the reason I don't wanna do that is because I'm in this for maximum learning. And so I just wanna do this and kind of just work it out as best I can because I feel as though this is gonna follow the same kind of pattern. So in my head, because it's such a small car and this is such a small opening, this whole front clip comes off. So I think very much I'm gonna to have to take the front bumper cover off. There's probably gonna be a bumper in there. I'm gonna to have to remove that. And I'm thinking just by looking at it, you know, maybe these bolts undo this front, you know, for the top front clip. And if we come down here, yeah, there's like, you know, there, there's bolts here. There's some kind of like crash tube. So I'm probably gonna have to undo these here at the bottom and then release all of the structure on the bottom, you know, and I'm gonna have to undo the axles, I imagine, to take, to pull the axles out of the gearbox and probably the control arms and all sorts of stuff that I had to do on the Mini also. And that's gonna pull the rad and everything back and I'll be able to drain the coolant. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda crack on as best I can. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crack on with it as best I can. And then only when I get really stuck will I look at instructions. I just feel that to learn the best, if I kind of go on instinct and go on my little experience and then try and solve problems just as they arise, I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm just gonna suck in way more information and be able to get a hold on doing this kind of work much quicker. That's the plan anyway, I mean, who, who knows? I'm probably gonna get stuck just taking the engine cover off knowing me, but yeah, I'm just gonna dive into it, see what happens and then ask for help when I need it. the bumper off all the parts that was easy enough and what I'm doing I'm being absolutely meticulous with putting everything into bags and labeling them all of the bolts so like plastic under tray bumper cover fixings bottom bumper bolts I've even done wheel nuts and this is what I learned from doing it on a mini that yeah I know like that might be obvious that they're wheel nuts right but with the Mini, what happened was, is that I took all the engine out, I took loads of stuff off the car, and I was absolutely convinced that I'll easily remember where this goes, what that's for. But that project dragged on longer than I thought. And when it comes to reassembling the car, I'd forgotten, just completely forgotten where loads of things went. Now, I did get it all sorted, 
but I could have done without the kind of, you know, the uncertainty of just looking at a pile of bolts and just going, oh, I just don't know, I'm not entirely sure. So I'm just trying to eliminate all of that. I just don't want any uncertainty. I don't want any nervousness when I come to putting the car back together. I just want to be 100% confident. So yeah, I mean, some people might think that I'm going overboard, but I know that's going to pay me back when I come to put all this together. And look, I literally, I'm looking down at the floor right now, and this is another thing. So that right there, this is a bolt from the Mini. This is an old bolt from the Mini that I don't, I don't need anymore. And that's just laying on the floor. And you can imagine that when I'm coming to put this car back together again, I'm gonna see this bolt and panic and go, where the hell did that go? And as it turns out, didn't even go on this car. And let me just take you underneath the car now, because I think I've already uncovered some evidence. So I told you, didn't I, that in the MOT it flagged that there was an oil leak. And that is incredibly oily. I don't know if you can see it out there. I think you can. There is oil absolutely everywhere. So, I mean, right now it's just kind of, to me, evidence that, yeah, this car ran out of oil. But also, I've got all of these, like, pink kind of crystalline deposits all over the engine everywhere all the way under there if you know what that is please put it in the comments because i haven't the foggiest idea so i was just taking the battery out in the battery tray and i'm like oh now there's like weird red stuff in there to go with the pink stuff and i was like oh no actually <laughs> that red stuff is me and i can see in the comments i know i hear you wearing gloves wearing gloves i will i'll get some now that is the last knuckle scrape, I promise. That was weird though, because I didn't even notice that I did that that time until all the blood started coming out. Oh, I'm gonna go around looking like a ruffian again. I've been wearing gloves. I've done a little bit of work. I understand your concern for me when you post in the comments, you should just be wearing gloves. However, even picking up this nut here was just difficult. There's so many things on here that are like M6 bolts and M6 nuts and you've got this like no dexterity. I'm sorry, but I think I'm just gonna have to pay the price because it's just, I don't know how people do it. I don't understand. Here is where we're at. Headlights are out on both sides. Everything's kind of exposed. And so it looks as though everything down here the radiator and the world's cutest intercooler. This all seems to actually be disconnected if I pull, well not disconnected, it's all uh, loose at the bottom. And if I give it a pull, you can kind of just see the whole structure moving. It looks as though it's only those two bolts and those two bolts that are holding that whole front clip in, which is fantastic news. So I think where I might need to go from here is to get down here or to get underneath and then actually start unclipping a load of these hoses and uh, get that bottom rad hose off first and drain the coolant. And then I think it's all just gonna kind of like just pull off and we're gonna be winning. Also, the weather this week, absolutely delightful. I mean, it's a little bit overcast today, but I mean, I'm in a t-shirt. This is absolutely fantastic. I love it. I've got my tray here and this has got a clip on it that I've never seen before. So I'm pretty sure what's going to happen is, is I'm going to shove my face in here like this, try and prise this off and it's just going to land directly in my eyeballs. And I can't really see another way around. <laughs> I think, I think that goes in there. No, I think that might, I don't know how that goes. How the hell? Hang on. I've had a, no, this is silly. Wait, let, me no that's also silly um yeah what on earth is going on yeah oh i don't know fit why couldn't you just use the same type of clamps that everyone else seems to use there's no need for this okay so i'm at the top hose now and I think without even touching that clip, this looks loose. So I think I might just be able to pull this hose off. And I've got my 
catcher thingamajigger down there. I mean, can you drain a can you drain the coolant from the top hose or does it have to be from the bottom hose? I don't know. I'm about to find out. That is funky colour coolant. What has happened there? Okay, so it very much looks like I am going to have to go underneath and get that bottom hose off. Maybe that will just pull off as well, actually. Okay, so it's actually seven days later and I've finally got that clip off. So now, I think just this hose should just come off. I hope. Okay, I won't lie to you, that could have gone slightly better. But it wasn't catastrophic. <laughs> I am gonna have to clean this up though, because I'm pretty sure cats love to drink coolant and it's very poisonous for them. And there are a lot of cats in this area, including my own. Okay, and I'm no coolant expert by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm pretty sure coolant shouldn't be rust colored. I think this car has been on its way out for a little while longer than I originally thought. That's not good. Um, it's probably, that's been pumping around the engine, that's been pumping around the radiator. I think when we get the new engine in at the very minimum, I'm gonna have to just flush some coolant or some something through the rad a good few times just to clear out whatever the hell that is but i think now what i can do is remove a couple of the other hoses and then this whole front clip should come off okay so i've got most of the hoses off there is one on the bottom of the intercooler with a another type of hose that i have never seen before so i think what i'm gonna do is undo the top bolts here pull this off and then at least i can get to that one clip and also, like, as I said, I'm just going on instinct here. If there's a load of Fiat mechanics watching this and you're thinking, why are you doing it like that? Apologies, I mean, I don't know either. I've never seen anything like it. How is that even a clip? Ah, oh my God, it just snapped off. <laughs> Fine, I'm happy with that. I will put a new one on. Okay. Uh oh. Spilling everywhere. Spillage. Spillage. Oh no, oil. Oil spillage. Uh oh. Bad move. Didn't do it right. So, my question to you lot is should there be oil in the intercooler? Okay, ladies and gents, that is all of the front clip off. I'm gonna clean all this up properly and dispose of this properly. I'm gonna jet wash it. But that is some very nice access now. I mean, I'm not sure, to be honest, any of the subframe needs to come out on this car because that all looks like I'm gonna be unimpeded. Obviously, I'm gonna have to take the drive shafts out and out for the gearbox because I'm pretty sure the gearbox is going to have to come out with the engine because I can't see an easy way of uh, keeping the gearbox in there and taking the engine out you're not going to line it up either when you put it all back together are you but if I now come in here look you can see this oil leak much better and I'm not 100% sure still where that's coming from I mean it looks like the area i mean this has got to be the oil feed pipe for the turbo right that's the turbo i think <laughs> and that uh and so maybe there's a seal in there or something around here has been leaking so i mean or there's a or the gasket is that an oil that must be an oil pump there right is it is there a gasket in there or something that's gone honestly i never even realized that i lived under 
a flight path until I started making these videos because I swear to God, every time I press record, a helicopter or an aeroplane flies directly overhead and just hangs about for a little bit. All right, so yeah, I mean, if I look down there, yeah, I think the subframe can very much stay in because this engine is way forward of the subframe, which is down there and it's way forward of the steering rack and everything it all kind of tucks up nicely behind it so that's cracking news so i'm thinking then all i really need to do is go around unplug all the things that need unplugging disconnect the drive shaft from the gearbox disconnect the gear shift the gear link thingamajigger cable linkage thinger down there now birds can you can you please be quiet my word um, and then I can hook up my engine crane and then whoo, just pull it out, I think. And don't forget, ladies and gents, uh, if you want to follow along with this project and get all the updates and everything, then just uh, do me a favour and hit subscribe. It's kind of like just here and it just whoo, takes a nanosecond. Like, whoo, 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 whoo. Dead easy. Nice one. Thank you ever so much. So I am going to leave it here. It's getting quite late. And I got quite a lot done for me, <laughs> considering I started late and I jabbered on for absolutely ages trying to explain what was going on with this. But yeah, I'm quite happy with this progress and I reckon tomorrow I can come in here and just probably pull the engine out to be quite honest with you. Okay, fantastic. Nice one. I will see you in the next one.